The moral is caught the virus, so I've written you a poem. We need your help to cure it. So, so stay, stay the fuck at home. <laughs> Hi guys, for those of you out there that don't know me, my name is Erin Micklow and I host a show on YouTube called Last Rockers TV, where I interview bands, cover their live sets and do festival recaps. So in this time of social distancing and quarantine, I wanted to do a continuation of that in a different platform via live stream. So I've started a new show segment called 20 Questions With, where I bring on artists via live stream and we hopefully entertain you guys. So tonight's special guest is Mr. Finnegan Bell of the band Love Ghost. So let's bring him on. Are you out there? Connecting. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> let's start things off with a drink. What is your drink of choice? Yeah, so um, I'm a big tea person. So I made myself a cup of uh, green tea with, um, with honey. And uh, yeah, so... That sounds really healthy. I'm over here cracking a White Claw. <laughs> oh, I love White Claws, but I'm um, also green tea for sure. <laughs> claws out, raws out. Oh God, these things are so trashy, but fucking delicious. <laughs> I love them. So let's move it along. Let's start with the next question in our game of 20 questions. So how would you describe your band Love Goes Sound for out those people out there that don't know you guys? Um, for sure. So we definitely, uh, we've changed a lot um, over the years, but I, I would describe our, our current song, our current sound as trap rock. Okay. Like, we're definitely, we started off as like a straight up grunge band, straight up rock and roll band. And then we kind of, we started elementing, like we started putting beats into our songs. And so, yeah, we just call it trap rock. That's, a, that's what we describe it as. It's basically just like seeing like Nirvana, but with beats added into it. Yeah, the first time I saw you guys, um, you like the first impression I got was you just remind me a lot of Kurt Cobain, but then it's like very current in, in the time that we live in of like kind of millennial culture as well. And like, I mean, I'm, I'm into it because it's like, God, how many, you know, Nirvana ripoffs do you need? Like, it's like, you got to take it and make it your own. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, hell yeah. So what and who are your musical inspirations? Obviously, Nirvana has to be one of them. Yeah, Kurt Cobain was my childhood hero. So that for sure was, um, he's definitely up there for sure. I mean, Radiohead, Smashing Pumpkins, Elliot Smith, definitely, especially in my, in my formative years. And then probably like in middle school and high school, more so high school, I got really into into hip hop, like, I love classic hip hop, like 90s hip hop, like um, Tupac and Dre, and I'm a big Eminem fan, but I'm, I also got really inspired by the whole SoundCloud scene and Juice World and Bones. So I definitely say it's kind of like a mix of all of that is my inspirations for sure. For sure. Okay, so you have a song <laughs> where you uh -huh. talk about eating your brother, which is super, super morbid, but yeah. You're actually an only child, so can you talk about like what that song's really about? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the song "Dead Brother" actually like it came to me in a dream, where like I just had like this brother and like I brutally killed him and killed him and ate him, but uh, basically like, <laughs> which is funny, but I think it just kind of like. I think like there's a lot of metaphors going on. It could have meant that like I wanted to like, you know, kill a certain part of myself. It could have meant that like I felt like betrayed by a bro and like it just like it definitely like there's a lot of like metaphors that are going on at once and I think it's kind of like a mix of all of that. Like I feel like songs are kind of like there's should always be like multiple meanings going on at once behind them. That's kind of what makes like everyone be able to relate to them. So they can say like, Oh, like I relate to this part. I relate to that part. Like, you know? Yeah. It's like having to take a deeper look, but it's like, you know, if you just listen to that song, like I played it for my one friend and he's all, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, was, definitely... like, I was like, he didn't actually <laughs> eat his brother. Obviously it's like a metaphor for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a metaphor. I I'm not into cannibalism yet, but, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty funny because you're, like, listening to it. It's like, yeah, it's like, excuse me, what? I know, it's such a groovy song. 
stuff. It was such a dark lyrics. I kind of did it on purpose just to be like that, but hell yeah. <laughs> so, okay, next question. What's on your bucket list? Hmm. What's on my bucket list? I'd probably say that, I mean, definitely, like, I want to travel as much as possible. So I think just, like, the more places that I could travel to and, like, definitely just go on more tours and, yeah, definitely revolving around traveling for sure. Yeah, when this is over. When this is all over. Yeah, when this is all over. <laughs> our houses again. Uh, for now, I'm just definitely uh, finna stay home and drink my tea and play drink guitar. Tea. Do, do like some time travel in your mind. <laughs> so do you have any guilty pleasures? Oh, damn. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, I love Takis and I, I will eat like a whole bag of Takis. But I'm also like really like, like, can I cuss? Yeah. Or all right, I'm, I'm a total bitch when it comes to spicy food. Like, I cannot stand it at all. So I, I just get, like, super spiced out, and I'll just eat, like, a big bag of Takis. And what is a Takis? Like, what is that? It's kind of like, it's like a tortilla chip with, like, lime and spice. It's kind of like a really nice Cheeto. Oh, oh, yeah, I think I've seen those. They have them at, like, health food grocery stores, right? It's spelled, like, T A. Q. No, it's it's T A K I. It's it, you'll find it like most liquor stores and stuff actually. But... Okay, no, we're thinking of different chips then. Okay, yeah, never mind. Right. <laughs> I'm also another guilty pleasure of mine is I'm hella into cartoons. Like I absolutely love cartoons, and like so I've been watch like for instance like I'll eat like I mean I'll eat oh my god I'll I'll watch like. Have you ever seen Mr. Pickles? Like that show about the satanic dog? And it's like, no. oh, and like, like uh, I love that shit. Like, obviously, like I love like South Park and Bojack Horseman. I love Robot Chicken. I will watch so much Robot Chicken. I just like, I, I, I have to go there. I just love Robot Chicken. Yeah, I like a lot of the adult cartoons. Like a lot of those ones that they used to play really, really late night on like, I think it was like Cartoon Network. Like that Adult Swim. That, that, that's what I'm talking about. Like that was like made for like people like us. Like that is amazing. Th those those late night cartoons. I know, I miss those. Like I feel like that was like a, a genre that doesn't really happen anymore, right? Or, or is it? Is it still going? No. It's still going, but it's just like, I feel like, I'm mean, like Mr. Pickles, like that's like a pretty like new show as well. But, okay. Yeah. Bojack, Bojack Horseman, that's another good one. Yeah, I've heard of that one. I was trying to think of the ones like back in the, oh, it was, um, do you remember the one that had the milkshake and the hamburger and they were like from outer space? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah, that I was one of my favorites. That one was so fucking funny. And then it had like the fat guy, Carl, the hair show. guy. That show's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, next question. What is the first thing you notice about a person? I mean, first thing, I'm, I'm, I'm really, like, I'm a pretty, like, accepting person. And, like, I'll just notice something, like, if they're doing something, like, unique and interesting with how they dress, like, I'll definitely take that into mind. I, I just think it's always, like, really cool. Like, even, like, with you, like, obviously the first thing I notice is your hair. And I'm just like, oh, like, I hella respect that. Like, that's really cool. That's really dope. And then the second thing that I think about when I see someone is like, oh, can I take this person in a fight? Because, and I just like go through the math <laughs> in my head. And I just like think, and I'm going through all their UFC stats. I'm like, okay, their reach is this, their height is that, their weight is this. And I'm thinking like, if shit went down, could I take them? But why? That's such a like odd thing to think. Like, that's the first thing you think of. Be because <laughs> like, you just never know what's gonna happen. So like, you know. <laughs> 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 you're so funny okay next question um what's the worst pickup line you've ever heard i mean just the other day someone said hey if coronavirus doesn't take you out can i and i was like it's kind of funny but it's a little bit too soon <laughs> but it, that's just fucking stupid too i like i would automatically disqualify a person if they said that to me but no you can't take me out yeah, it was pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what a dumbass. Okay, so best pickup line you've ever heard? Um, I think that, like, when someone, like, really, like, compliments, this is, like, specific, like, to me, like, if someone tells me, like, oh, you can, like, sing, sing, like, sing, 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 like, that's just, like, 
that like really means a lot to me and I'm like yeah you can like take me out to dinner or you can like do whatever you want to me like <laughs> if you like if you go for that like it's game over like it's game you over. get girls that want to take you to dinner that's so funny yeah <laughs> I guess it's a different thing like you know when you're in a band it's it's a different dynamic where maybe you just get girls that kind of throw themselves <laughs> No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Um, what could you spend all day talking about? What's something you're so passionate about you just never get sick talking about it? Wait, can you say that question one more time? What's something you could spend all day talking about? Like, you're just so passionate about it that it just you would just never get tired of talking about it. I was, like, a super weird kid. So, like, I was really into, like, aliens and astral projection and like monsters and demons and vampires so like once someone starts talking about like spooky shit like oh like ghosts exist aliens exist like you know the lizards like run the government like i believe in all that shit or i don't well i don't know if i believe in it but i definitely do entertain it very highly so like once someone brings that up like i will go on and on and on and on and on so that's you something would, i could talk about all day you'd get along with um tom delong from blink 182 because he's really into like you know, aliens and like, he's done, if, if you listen to some other interviews with him, he has done some like in-depth interviews about being involved with people that are like alien hunters and the government covering it up and all kinds of shit like that. It's creepy. Yeah, it, it's pretty creepy. And there's a lot of evidence and there's a lot of stories out there. I actually love Blink-182. So that makes me happy that um, you say that. <laughs> Tom DeLong, yeah, you have to, you have to look up some interviews with him. It's pretty interesting. I listened to one on K-Rock um last year and i was like it, it like got me into it i was like oh my god this is scary actually have you ever met him like i would assume maybe you would have like met him or no maybe... i never met tom but i've interviewed uh travis before yeah. and i've met mark Love um, but i i never met tom yeah travis is super awesome yeah so we're halfway through so next question is can you play us a song uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I will. Uh, this song is called, um, it's actually, it's an unreleased song. It's a love ghost song. And it's called, um, it's called I'll Be Fine. And it comes out in early May. So yeah. <laughs> I'm 
Usually that song's obviously like a lot different with the whole band stuff, but thank you for letting me like play on the show acoustically and stuff. It's well, fun. yeah, I feel like all musicians, it's like when you're not with the band and, and in a songwriting process, you're probably, you know, banging that stuff out on an acoustic while the songs are taking shape. So. Yeah, for sure. I wrote like, I wrote, I write pretty much all my songs on acoustic guitar first and then I uh, beef it up later. Yeah, it's pretty. You you just every time you sing, especially on acoustic, you just remind me so much of Kurt Cobain. You do. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. Love okay, that. so let's get back into our questions. What's the best bad decision you've ever made? Probably taking the three tabs of acid before this interview. <laughs> yeah, that that was a bad decision. Did you really? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> that was explain <laughs> while you're drinking tea. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna base out at home tonight. That's one way to do quarantine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but like the other day, like I mean, like being on like psychedelic drugs right now with COVID nineteen is so scary because you're already <laughs> out of your mind. But then imagine that there's a deadly virus that could possibly wipe out humanity, <laughs> and it's real, and it's real. Like, imagine how scary that is. That's horrifying if you're on psychedelic drugs. It's horrifying if you're not. Ugh. Oh, God. I did acid a couple times back in high school, and I um, I did not enjoy it any of the times. And the last time I did it, I had a bad trip, and it was horrible. And I was just like, make it stop. <laughs> it was yeah, not fun. Definitely, definitely. I feel like you just kind of, like, have to constantly tell yourself that you're going to be okay. Yeah, I, you know, I threw it up, and that's always a bad sign, because that's your body saying, hey, I don't like this, and if you throw yeah. up, it's, you're not going to have a good time, so I threw it up, and then for the remainder of the time after that, I was like, oh. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay, so what is your silliest fear? What is, like, an irrational fear you have, something silly? Squirrels. <laughs> I do not fuck with squirrels at all. <laughs> oh. Why? Like, so when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, um, like I found out about rabies, right? It's like pretty normal, <laughs> like rabies. And then I was like, oh, how could you get rabies? <laughs> and then my mom's like, I don't know, like a squirrel bites you. <laughs> and then like the other day I was like playing outside and I saw a squirrel and it was like tracking me. <laughs> So I just assumed that the squirrel was going to give me rabies. So if I'm ever, like, alone with a squirrel, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm going to get rabies. Like, it's going to attack me and bite me, and I'm going to have to get shots in my stomach. Like, this is going to be horrible. This is going to be absolutely horrible. Oh, uh, well, you know, I mean, not right now. If you got attacked by a squirrel right now, you, you might actually die because you won't be able to go get a rabies shot. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's even worse now. Now my, my fear of squirrels is heightened. <laughs> All the more reason to stay inside. Definitely. There's coronavirus, squirrels, <laughs> like, what's next? What is next? <laughs> okay, next question. What is one of the weirdest things you have in your house? Yeah, I actually have it right here. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a taxidermy um, black widow. Oh my it's, god. Yeah. Why it's do you like have that? Dog. Where did you get that? <laughs> I think it was a gift. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a gift, but um, I'm really into spiders. I have a spider tattooed on my back. I just have always loved spiders. But um, yeah, I just kind of, it's like, it's like my friend. It's my friend during the quarantine. It's just, <laughs> um, you know, like I'm just like talking to it. And it's not <laughs> a very talkative person, but um, you know, it's okay. You can have a few like shy homies. It's not the end of the world. 
<laughs> sounds like the, it sounds like the isolation's getting to you a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> We're all at that point right now. Um, okay, so next question. What's the best show you've ever played and why? I'd say it's a mix between two. I mean, the best show I've ever played was we played at a festival, Festival FFX. FFF in uh, in Ecuador okay. and it was the biggest show I've ever played and also it was like it was a festival show so it's like a really big stage a lot of people and I actually like I was I didn't know what to expect and I was like crying on stage I'm a very emotional person so I was like <laughs> totally like I was just kind of like oh my god like I've done a lot of work and this is like what what happened and I was like totally freaking out so that's definitely one of the best shows I've ever played and also I'd like to say probably the first show I ever played, I was about, I was 13. I was at, um, it's actually it closed down now, but it was like um, this little place above an Italian restaurant called Room 5 in, okay. um, in Hollywood. And they would let like singer songwriters kind of do like an open house. And basically I think that like, just like from playing that first show, it kind of gave me like the confidence, like, oh, like I can actually like do this. Like, this is like, a legit thing that like can happen yeah so. it's it's scary it's scary as fuck but you know it's like you just gotta kind of rip the band-aid off and like all right here we go you just gotta go for it like full throttle yeah yeah okay so worst show you've ever played and why <laughs> um th there's been a few but <laughs> um i'd probably say like one of the worst shows we've ever played it started off on a really good note it started off where we were we were playing that uh, it was a few years back. We were playing it um, with the Wallows. Okay. And um, shout out Dylan. Dylan's really cool. I talked to him a few months ago. I saw him at a party, and basically, like, he was. Uh, um, so at the show, we were gonna play. It was this was right when Thirteen Reasons Why came out. So it was like it was really big, and the show sold out in like I don't know maybe like. 15 minutes like it was like completely packed right and we were gonna play right before wallows right and yeah. then um like literally like i don't know like a half an hour before we were about to go on um they came out to us and they were like hey so we actually are gonna um you guys are gonna go on after wallows and i was like uh i mean there's nothing you can do at that point so i was just like yeah. oh, okay so i was just like expecting whatever and then so, you know, after they played their set, they, like, um, they were, they got, you know, kicked out of the venue, and they were, like, loading up all their gear, and obviously, like, everyone was there to see the Wallows, so everyone just, like, walked outside to get, um, to get autographs and stuff, and then, yeah. like, expected to, expected to play, like, a full, like, packed house at the, at the Roxy, and then, like, the curtains open, and there's, like, new people there, and I was, like, oh, my God, this is what, this is what, like, heartbreak feels like <laughs> oh i feel for bands like that because like it's not like you can just be like okay there's nobody here actually we're just gonna not play like you still have to play and you still have to play well because there could be that one person there that's gonna make a difference in your career definitely you never but it's know. probably hard because you have like no energy to feel <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, what makes you laugh the most? Um, it changes, but right now I'm really into Pete Davidson. I just like, ever since he had that Netflix special, I just cannot stop watching Pete Davidson. And then he also was in that new movie that came out, Big Time Adolescence on uh, Hulu. I just like, I get such a kick out of him. I can't stop laughing at Pete yeah. Davidson. It's just so fucking funny. I, I just can't fucking take it. I'll have to check that out. I don't know, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> He's, uh, he's a comedian, but he's very funny. Okay, I'm gonna have to check him out because I ran out of... Well, I don't ever, like, watch TV. I watch the tiger shit. Um, oh, my God, I love that. You're actually from Florida, right? Yeah, so everyone's talking about how crazy that is, but I'm all, like, this is kind of normal. This is what I grew up with. It's not really that crazy. <laughs> Florida really is that trashy. The South really is that trashy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? Like, this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> like I grew up in Tampa in Hillsborough County where that Carol lady lives and it's like yeah this is how people are there <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah okay so next question what makes you really angry I 
Um, Everybody gets angry sometimes, you know. Yeah, hella, hella angry. <laughs> I mean, like, people make me angry. I think just, like, people just, like, disrespecting me. You know, makes me want to go, uh, go, go, go crazy, go batshit crazy. But, um, yeah, that's probably what pisses me off the most. Just the someone, like, repeatedly disrespecting me. <laughs> you you would be like um what was it that in that movie i love you man you know uh jason's character he's all like he's like you just gotta go at him and be fucking crazy and then they don't know what to do yeah <laughs> i could see that with you in a fight you would do something really weird and then know what yeah, to do. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay um next question what was your first tattoo and can you tell how it happened how how and why you got it <laughs> uh yeah so i got my first tattoo when i was 17 and my um actually my, my ex-girlfriend uh gave it to me it's a stick and poke it's on my ribs it's a it's a sad face <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 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 that was that was a good. I, I'm super into tattoos. I have probably like, I have not enough tattoos. Whenever uh, someone asks me about like how many tattoos I have or whatever, I'm just like I do not have enough. Because like the goal is to be covered by the time I'm like, um, I don't know, in a few years. So yeah. <laughs> to not have any space left to the point where you have to like start getting really really weird ones. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like I'm running out of space here. Like I see a lot of my friends like they. They literally ran out of space, so then they started blacking their tattoos out. They started doing the black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, last question. What's the first thing you're going to do or are looking forward to when this quarantine ends? Definitely playing shows and going to shows. That's, like, yeah, I think, like, that whole, like, not being able to see live music right now and play live music that's the most uh that's like the worst thing for me right now i'm, I'm not gonna be able to don't we have this whole tour set up and got canceled so definitely like the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to shows um, i'm gonna play shows and also just gonna go to shows just you know support artists and love to do that so that's definitely gonna be the first thing i do once this quarantine ends I know so many of my musician friends are in the same boat. It's like musicians are relying on that income for tours. And, you know, me not being a musician, but being a, a music fan, like that was what inspired me to start the show too, because I was like, God, I really miss going to shows. It was the social thing. It's like, you see some bands, you hang out with your friends, you have some drinks, you know? And it's like, ah. but like being so inspired by so many musicians live streams, it's like, okay, let's, you know, let's do this and, and give us purpose and structure to our days, too. Yeah. So let's close with one more song. Will you play us one more song? Yeah, it's uh, it's an unreleased song called called Outer Space. And once again, um, <laughs> shout out to Tom DeLong. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were talking about aliens earlier, huh? That's crazy. <laughs> Take me away from 
from all the years gone, some a million miles away. In dust houses, throwing stones, from a million miles away. On my own, to the unknown, I'm a million miles away. If you want to. Here's my throne, I'm a million miles away. <laughs> Left your behind. Body too. My spirit's not five for nine. They measured my weight, they measured my weight. They could not measure my soul. Now I saw it. Take me away from all these clones. I'm a million miles away in glass houses, throwing stones. I'm a million miles away on my own to the unknown. I'm a million miles away if you want to. Here's my throne, I'm a million miles away. Woo! That was pretty. Your songs are so sad, but like moody, but like. I don't know, they're, they're, they're pretty. They're pretty songs, but they're like sad and moody when you're having one of those days where you just like want to indulge and, and be a moody fuck. <laughs> they're definitely, definitely like that. And it's funny too, because like, I feel like when you see like, when you see like Love Ghost Live, like with, uh, with everything, it's kind of, it feels like very like big, but when you can like, uh, when you really like strip it down, so they are like a lot of like very like sad, like acoustic guitar songs. But then it's kind of like it's like masked as like a big kind of like hard rock thing or something, you know, it's kind of like, so it's interesting that just like to see it, I think like this, but yeah, and when you listen to your music recorded too, like streaming your Spotify, it's it's the same like it's, you know, your live set is definitely different where it's a little bit more rock, but like listening to your Spotify stream, it's it's a little more stripped down like that too, where it's moody and, and kind of like depressing, but not in a bad way. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's the end. So I want to thank you so much for coming on um, for episode two of 20 Questions With. Woo! Everyone out there, please go follow Love Ghost on all their social media platforms. Go stream their music on Spotify and all other streaming platforms. And head over to their YouTube channel and watch their new music video that just came out on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on the show that was really kind of you and I had a lot of fun talking with you and it was great yeah this is a, such a fun way to like spend the days because it's like I woke up today I was like what fucking day is it oh it's Sunday it doesn't matter <laughs> for does real. it matter anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you for entertaining me and playing your beautiful music so everyone go give love goes to follow and I hope you have a good night thank you so much bye